Hello and welcome to Say Hi to the Future, a podcast aimed at highlighting the human side of ingenuity. My name is Ken Tenser, CEO of Spiderworks, a leading business consultancy for mid-market organizations and entrepreneurs globally. With me today is Naomi Thomas, founder of Infinity Careers, an organization bridging the gap between education and the workforce by turning brands into universities. They streamline tech career navigation, training, and career community discovery. Like this video if you enjoy our show and subscribe to our channel. Leave us a comment with who we should interview next. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the show. Naomi Thomas, welcome to Say Hi to the Future. Hi, thank you so much for having me. So Naomi, I've got to say you're the first person I've met that built their first computer at six years old. Um, like I, I, I still look for full service gas station, so I, I don't even know how to, <laughs> how to frame that question. So t- tell us about what, what the interest was and what brought you to do that, if you can remember even. <laughs> yes, I know, I was I was so young, it's, it was so long ago, but it was definitely, I was, I feel like I, came out the womb, just interested in technology. Um, I couldn't keep my hands off of all of my dad's gadgets. So he studied computer science. My mom is a doctor, so she went down the science route. And um, I was just always fascinated about building things. And Mm -hmm. my dad would create all of, you know, um, his computer technology from scratch, all of his laptops for work. And by the time, you know, instead of, you know, when I went to to ask what I wanted for Christmas or instead of Barbie dolls or Brad dolls, I would, I wanted my own computer so I can do what my dad did. It was a really amazing opportunity for my dad purchased all the parts and he actually instructed me on how to to build um, step by step. And I, then, you know, I was able to learn and my parents put me in a lot of different women in engineering and, and camps on the weekends when I was in middle school and high school, I would say every summer and every weekend I was doing something educational um, related. So it definitely built me into who I am today and making me, you know, want to, you know, spread the word around just technology. Well, that's cool. I mean, it's really wonderful that you had that support from your parents, from your dad, I guess, specifically, but that's, that's got to be really nice when you look back at, at childhood. Yes, I'm super grateful for that opportunity because not a lot of kids today get that exposure, especially from communities that I'm from or marginalized communities from people from underrepresented backgrounds. It's Mm -hmm. something I definitely don't take for granted because access to technology, access to even Wi-Fi or like quality, you know, like Wi-Fi to be able to actually create in the digital world is rare um, in some communities. And so I'm very fortunate to have that experience and now I can, you know, pay it forward and try to bring access to other communities that may not have those resources. So Naomi, you had this wonderful foundation again, obviously from, from home and your dad and both, both parents and, but how did it continue on? Cause I see you, you were participating in computer science or the computer science institutes at UC Berkeley and UVA when you were in high school. So obviously you know, th- this this whole path forward just kept growing for you. It did. And, you know, having that foundation um, just early on and having great parents, my mom always making sure I was in school or she was always, she found all of those programs. And, um, you know, it definitely helped me at least have some structure and some guidance and mentorship, which is so key to navigating the tech industry. You need to have, mm-hmm. you know, some mentorship and support. There's so many opportunities out there, but if you don't even know what is possible or get that, you know, initial experience, it will be difficult for you to even understand what is possible. So having that experience to go to Silicon Valley and be exposed to the incredible world of technology. And that was my, I mean, although I was interested in tech, from six years old going through middle school, but it wasn't until high school when I attended that computer science institute at UC Berkeley, I was selected for an externship at Google during that program in the summer. I went on tours of all the different tech companies there and was just um, like, you know, sold on the entire employee experience where there's free food and, you know, there's massages everywhere. And I know there's a bowling (laughs) alley at Google's campus. You can bring your dog to work. I mean, they created a community that is accommodating the employee 
in order for the employee to thrive. And it was like, okay, I don't have to wear suits and ties. I can wear t-shirts and hoodies. I can eat food all day and do incredible work that is making impact at scale. It was completely the perfect career opportunity for me. And it's definitely what made me want to even start a tech company to help other people get interested in the world of technology as well. You know, that's awesome. And it just speaks volumes to um, building the right culture, to knowing who you're engaging, what makes them happy and, and, and makes work effortless in some ways. I mean, it never is, but at least you might probably feel better about doing it and, 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 you know, the group of people around you. I think this is the right lead into it. There's something that was really interesting is, is jobs for the future. Um, what is jobs for the future and what are some of those jobs for the future? Yeah, so Jobs for the Future is actually is an incredible organization that I'm actually one of the um, cohort members within their entrepreneur and residence program. Um, but they're always embodying, you know, just innovation within um, providing just access to the workforce and different communities that may not have the resources. So because my company is highlighting a lot of opportunities in tech that may be often overlooked, like a uh, data scientist for Sephora or a software engineer at Nike. And most people don't know Nike is a tech company. Um, it's really exposing people to the jobs that are um, available out there that need people that obviously need better representation, but just open opportunities to innovate within industries that are starting to understand how technology can really make the consumer experience a lot more efficient and improving just the you know, consumer experience and the employee experience overall. We see a lot of intersections between technology and beauty, fashion, sports. Um, so it's really important to you know, highlight what opportunities are in these industries that may not traditionally be known to have tech immersed in them. I know fashion is experience, or experimenting with you know, wearables. Um, I was featured in a recent article with Vogue highlighting the intersection of fashion and technology careers and how a lot of tech, um, people from tech backgrounds are moving to fashion and helping to innovate that industry forward. And so that's where the jobs are heading are in those untapped opportunities where technology can really be, you know, beneficial and that, you know, we're building careers and building, um, you know, jobs within areas that typically didn't have them. That's that's really interesting because I, I think and, and I think it's critically important because I think a lot of people don't sit and think about technology or a career in technology being, say, outside of coding or outside of, you know, d developing programming. So how do you get that word out? How do you tell people one that, look, obviously, th there's a lot of departments at a Google. So we, we, we know um, that, that technology isn't just about coding, but how do you let them know that you, you can be in love with fashion, but you can also be tech driven at the same time? It's definitely important to highlight the opportunities within tech by creating a system that is more passion first. So we take a passion first approach to tech career exploration. And in that discovery, I think that's the most important part and the first step to anybody's career journey process, right? It's like really finding a career that aligns with you and your interests. And I believe that 70% of job seekers don't find, aren't in careers that actually align with their skills and their interests and they're still navigating. And that's why I think every two years, especially within Gen Z, they're always switching careers and figuring out what really fits them. And so when it comes to discovering what career is best for you, we take that passion first approach with Infinity Careers. And we do this through like a matching um, experiment where we're leveraging AI through a chat experience where you're just chatting about your favorite locations, brands, industries, even values that resonate to you that may align to other companies. And just certain types of like work that you would find, you know, impactful or find, you know, that you would love to do. And we don't necessarily define it as, you know, what's typically out there is just like the skills approach where you're just given, you know, a bunch of skills or a bunch of career paths, like data analysts or software engineer. We don't even show you what those career paths are first. We ask you questions about like, what type of work would you like to do? Do you like to improve the 
user experience or just the visual of, you know, different apps and websites. And that could be going into the design roles or do you like leading teams to innovate technology um, without having to learn to code? And you make a great point about there are non-technical careers at tech companies and technical careers at tech companies. Companies. You don't have to be a yeah. developer to work at these companies. You can lead teams or you can, and it's really important to be passionate about the industry that your company is in. And you're even, you know, more valuable to be in those rooms if you are immersed into it. If you are a basketball player that didn't make it to the NBA, but you know the industry like the back of your hand, you get those tech skills or get any skills within, um, you know, the, the, the operations, you can be a data scientist or a software engineer for the MBA and still work in a career that you love, but also needs your representation. So Infinity Careers, and, and one, I think it's a, a wonderful um, undertaking. One, <laughs> all I remember when I graduated university is I took one of those tests and it said I would be the single worst insurance salesperson ever. <laughs> And I remember that decades later. Um, I think you've you've certainly gone way past those type of questionnaires. But um, are you working mostly with new grads? Are you looking at career transitioners? Both, like, t tell us the typical type of people or two or three types of people who would come to you. Yeah. So actually, initially, we were targeting like high school students because oh. they make the biggest decisions of their lives at 18 years old. Whether it is to you know, pursue a major in a career path or not attend college and, you know, go right into the workforce or just depending on whatever background. But what we discovered is like within our discovery and matching tool, a lot of high schoolers use it and a lot of educators use it as an icebreaker because it only takes a couple of minutes to, to go through and you're matched your career instantly. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, okay, this is where we can start. And now let's learn based on what, um, you know, you've been matched to. What we discovered, though, are a lot of people who are in college, who are recent grads, and even people who are making that career change right in the middle of their journey. They may be like, you know, mid-30s, even early 40s, really understanding what skills do I have? I'm in tech, but I really don't know what opportunities are out there for me, especially within companies or industries that aren't traditionally technical industries. So we definitely highlight and shine light on a lot of opportunities within those, especially, you know, if you think about luxury brands like Gucci and Chanel, I mean, they're innovating with technology. They have roles yeah. that are available. And so it's kind of like merging the two and making it a lot more approachable to do so instead of just taking a boring survey, like we make it a chat experience. We help you organize all your skills in one dashboard and all your interests and then keep track of your learning all in one place. You know what? I think you're starting in an amazing place. I mean, my my kids are uh, middle age twenties now, but I I remember the angst out of high school um, and, and all the things that they could do. I mean, it, it's it's well, there's so many paths you can you can take today. Um, but on that, I think what I've noticed so much. I mean, look, if you want to build a bridge, you've got to be an engineer. I mean, I get it. There's a, there's yeah. there's parts, and you got to put them in the right place. Other than that, though, because of the the quick pace of change and 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 changing careers, I see this resurgence in liberal arts education, mm -hmm. and just teaching younger people how to think think more freely because that capacity to think seems to be maybe the most important um, skill set now. And where you apply it will change over your years. Absolutely, and it's important to highlight you know any type of skill set you know, that is non-technical can be applied to any technical company. And, you know, a lot of, you know, we did an extensive run of like market research in the fall where we talked to a lot of different recruiters and what they specifically were looking for within talent. And it's not just the hard skills, like that won't really cut it nowadays. You know, a lot of recruiters are looking for people with soft skills, if you're a culture fit, if you can work as a team, right. if you, how you can, how you think more so like what you do, like it's that computational thinking or that, you know, applying more creative skill sets or wherever you, you know, a lot of people in tech don't, they didn't even start in tech. They may have went through liberal arts or they may have started in economics or business. And now they ended up in the tech industry because ultimately technology 
powers everything and technology will be immersed and integrated within every industry eventually. So it's important to start getting some of the skills that are needed or where they're going to like, uh, to be able to, you know, stay, you know, relevant within the job market and competitive as well. So um, it's, it's definitely something that is more of, you know, enhances your skill sets more so than makes it complicated or challenging. Just, you know, try to see which skill sets within tech, which there are so many, right. there's like 1800 different skills that companies look for that are technical that you can choose for. So um, no need to, to stress about it. We're just helping you align it and making it easier to discover what skills those would be best for you. You obviously have a lot of passion for what you do. And I think that's probably the single most important I've seen in careers or with successful people. How do you, how do you help people turn chaos into passion? Because I mean, skills are great. And I think you're doing it the way you described it. It sounds like you're doing it, but what are some of the fundamentals? Because if I don't want to get up in the morning, if I don't want to go to Google, as you said, if I don't like the environment, yeah. how do I strip all that away and figure out what I am or what I can be passionate about? Absolutely. It's, it's really just um, like a lot of our questions are just around like what just more generic questions. So we're not even getting really technical until we give you the results, but it's more so being like organized and dissecting everything that makes you you and seeing where those intersections might turn out to or what parts of those intersections might you want to start with and then seeing what you can add on. I know that it's, you know, what we're doing with the infinity careers, we're kind of just like organizing the process for you in one place so that you don't have to do a bunch of Googling um, and we're building toward really making it a, the most personalized experience with machine learning and AI to help you pretty much keep track of like, even like brands that you're interested, any type of interest in general and the skills that you know that you have and maybe skills that you want to learn and then figuring out what that will get you. And I think it's not only that the discovery is important, but it's also the training aspect of it. And that's one thing because um, we're technically like an education platform, but we focus on career discovery. And then once you're matched to a career, you can actually learn through the curriculum of the career that you're interested in. And the way that we kind of do that is um, there's so many different types of ways to, to learn alternative methods of education. You can go to, to, um, to college for four years. You could take you know, a course online or a boot camp. And we started with the courses and for the more self-paced learners the people who are trying to just get new skills. And what we did is we partnered with Coursera, LinkedIn Learning and Skillshare. And we extracted real job description skills and matched them to the courses at those um, platforms that are, you know, we manually vetted them. And then now we have automation to be able to match what skills based on the interests. And that's how we build our curriculum. So you can learn through the curriculum of a software engineer at Nike based on what skills they require on their job description and what courses are available there. So you can at least learn through the tech stack of the company, because that's another thing that is really important to understand when you're navigating the tech industry is every single company, you know, their developers may be programming with different languages or their tools, they all use different tools. They vary at different companies. And if you're enrolling in an, a boot camp that's teaching one language and you graduate and you spend all that time and money, and you may be limited to the type of companies that, you know, may need to reskill you on another programming language that the developer uses, or you're limited to just your options of, you know, what what languages that you learn and what company per, developers at those companies are using those languages and even like the tools. So making that direct connection and almost, almost like turning tech stacks into lesson plans. It's like mm -hmm. being more intentional in the approach of bridging the gap directly between education and the workforce. So you don't saving, you're not you know worried about wasting time and wasting money on enrolling in a degree that's going to teach you all of these you know, skills when you really want to work for this company that has all these skills that these right. developers and employees use. So very strong tool. Thank you for that, for a strong matching system. You also talk a lot about um, encouraging other women to pursue careers, their careers, multifaceted careers. Is there still this perceived stop sign for 
younger women looking to get into tech or looking to get into industry in general? I wouldn't say there's like a stop sign, but I will say that, I mean, there's been a lot of initiatives over the past decade, even that have been supporting women and girls and getting them interested in tech. And I will say, you know, over the past 10 years, like the numbers haven't really improved and they've actually gotten a lot worse in so many different areas. I mean, just this past year alone, the number of women in tech have has decreased by 2%. And it's important, you know, it's not just getting girls or women interested in tech, but it's also retaining their interests. And there's a lot of, a lot of problems that, you know, are a lot of them may be systemic around even just work culture and making sure that the, the employees are satisfied and not just from all of the mm-hmm. glitz and glamour of free food and ping pong tables and stuff, but, you know, making sure that they feel comfortable and they feel like they're in safe spaces. And so you see it a lot of different tech companies have a lot of PR nightmares over the past few years dealing with those, those issues. And it's one of the reasons why I became so mission driven when I went to Silicon Valley, when I went to that computer science institute at UC Berkeley and toured those, those companies in Silicon Valley, I was you know, blown away by the experience, but also disappointed by the lack of representation of other women, other people that look like me, other minorities that weren't in those rooms. And I did feel like I was an outsider in a sense. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted my peers and my friends to see that there was, you know, opportunity within the space. And it's important to highlight that like Google and Facebook and, you know, or the metas of the world and IBM, I mean, those aren't just tech companies, the only tech companies that you to work for. And so that's why we're highlighting tech opportunities within all different companies that need tech professionals, but also helping um, improve just like the perspective on what it's like to be in tech. Like you said, like you don't necessarily have to learn how to code. And so some of those barriers of what's been displayed in the media of representation has impacted the perspective of people from underrepresented communities thinking that there's only one certain type of, you know, type of person that fits that, um, you know, the, the perfect type of person to fit that um, description of being in tech. And so definitely I'm, I'm, I've been mission driven for over a decade now getting more women in tech, but it's also figuring out better solutions to help people find their place in tech. And then also keeping the companies accountable for creating inclusive environments. You know, for the, for the people who are listening who might be, um, in underserved populations or younger women who might not understand the past, where, where do they start? Where should they go to? Definitely start by, um, you can get matched to a career in tech at infinity.careers is our website. And it's free to use. It's free to organize everything that you're learning in your learning dashboard. So once you're matched, like all of your interests and your, you know, the skills that you have are all in one place. And then you can also link anything that you're learning. So if you're buying up a bunch of courses from different platforms and forgetting which ones, like you can actually link them in one place and not just the courses we have on our platform, but also anything you're learning from YouTube videos to blogs to podcasts, eBooks, you can link them and keep track of your learning journey. So, and then we're always here to support. So you can reach out to me on any social media um, at um, I'm Naomi Thomas on LinkedIn and Naomi at infinityedu.io for my email. Happy to jump on calls and just help people just sort through whatever issues that they're having within their career or help even provide resources and support um, and connections uh, to, to getting to the place that you want to be. Very nice. Very nice to hear that there is that path and there are people like you who are so supportive and so passionate about, you know, paying it forward to others. So Naomi Thomas, Infinity Careers, um, as our time comes to a close today on Say Hi to the Future, um, just tell us about one more thing. Um, you're part of a panel, the Girls Academic Leadership Academy. What, what is that and how is it helping uh, the next gen? Yeah, so I had the most incredible experience on the panel um, at the the Girls Academic Leadership Academy here in LA um, a couple weeks ago. It was incredible to talk to the high school students, the girls that were interested in potentially, um, you know, exploring what career options are available to them. So within our discussion, it, it 
you know, we had a lot of questions from the panelists, but my favorite part was really getting questions from the audience. And um, a lot of them were really intrigued with like entrepreneurship and where technology is going and what trends are there. And it gave me a lot of hope for like the future as well. And I will say like one thing that I always try to um, emphasize when I'm speaking to these girls is no matter what career path that they're on, it's so important for them to do whatever feels good for them and whatever they feel aligned with and not letting anybody kind of confine them into a box or label them because of a career path they chose. For example, if you're pursuing a career in business, you don't just have to be confined to being a businesswoman or being a person in tech. You can, you know, be in tech. You could also model. Like that's one of the things that I do on the side as well. You can, you know, you know, run a farm or do whatever that you feel is, you know, fills you up and not letting other people and other people's opinions around what job you should pursue be, you know, the impact you in a way where you aren't creating the life that you truly love and truly will live because you're the only person that's living it. So it's important for you to be happy while you're doing it. So and enjoying the journey along the way because don't be completely caught up in the pressures around, you know, navigating this industry, whether it's in tech or in another industry that you know nothing about that may be overwhelming. Just celebrate the small wins, keep moving forward and, you know, pivot whenever you feel necessary. Just explore different things and seeing what aligns. Well, Naomi, thank you so much for your time today. You know what, your passion is, is infectious. Um, it, it just, it's just wonderful. And thank you for doing what you do. And hopefully you'll have a chance to come back and update us. Uh, cause I have a feeling your world is uh, ever evolving just as you help others to evolve too. Yes, I would love to. Thank you so much for having me, Ken. Thank you.